here to make some prayer requests that we'll go over a friend of sister Trudy's husband Tom's Tom McMillan is having trouble with his lungs he's on oxygen and he's only in uh, in his early 40s also his wife has something wrong with her so remember her and him also and remember mom mom's doing well but she's got a spot on her leg that's giving her trouble just one little spot and uh, of course she's going to the doctor tomorrow maybe they'll get things squared away but it's just a little spot that's aggravating her, so y'all just remember her. Also, Sister Gail has a doctor's appointment Friday. She's having some problems, just remember her, everything will be well there. Sister Kathy Gabriel has one for Wanda Freyer. Uh, she had surgery today, and we're hoping everything went well, so just remember that. Also, remember the camp meeting coming up, and then we have a uh, announcement here from the, or update from the uh, people in Iran, it says uh, one of the brothers and his wife uh, remains in prison. His wife has been able to contact her father, but the the man has been uh, not be able to contact anyone. And then the other one is as his him and his him and his wife is uh, both remain in prison. And this guy that says brother Y O U C E F has been confirmed that the two judges have signed off on his execution, but they have to have three, so they're, they're looking for another one. So remember that. So, And then there's another one that this remains in uh, prison. Anyway, so just remember those. They're still in there. There's six of them here, so we know of six people still in there, and one of them's in dire need, you know, to uh, need a touch from the Lord right. to take care of that situation. Also, somebody had told me that today is Richard and Anna's anniversary. Is that right? Yeah, ten years. Ten years yeah. today. Yeah. Anna, if you're listening, you've done well. I was going to say some other stuff, but I won't. Just remember that. I know we all have unspoken requests. Let's all go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for letting us come out this evening. Lord, remember the ones that are traveling on the highways, wherever they may be today, you come down and bless them. Remember Brother Tom there, Lord, also, and, and Brother Collie's traveling back, Lord. A little accident that happened, Lord, just remember Brother Tom. Keep him safe. Give him strength, Lord. Continue to bless his body there. Lord, remember the request that was mentioned here from Sister Trudy, the family there that needed a touch. And, mom's leg they remember her also and just bless her be with us all here in the service bless the ones that lord that are lost lord heal the sick and save the lost lord remember the ones on the prayer list that we mention on a regular basis come down and bless them also we love you for you many blessings lord give dad strength continually bless him in jesus name we pray
Amen. Amen. You be seated. Sister Messer, would you like to pay the piano? Oh, here's James. Yes. Amen. I called Richard Brother Baker over here. So. <laughs> Apologize for that. Number 38. <laughs> and uh, Red Book. <laughs> Red Book. Leaning on everlasting arms. Amen. What a fellowship. What a fellowship, what a joy to find Leaning on the everlasting road What a blessing is, what a peace of mind Leaning on the everlasting road Leaning, leaning Safe and secure Let me walk close to thee. 
Let's pray. Precious Lord, as we come into your house this evening, we ask that you settle our hearts and minds, O oh God. Let us focus on you and the word that's come forth that you've sent unto us. We look forward to hearing from you and pray for revelation and understanding that we may walk in the light of the word of God. We're so thankful for many blessings you bestow upon this family, the bride of Christ, O oh God, that we have the truth, O oh Lord. We thank you for our jobs and our homes, our family and friends, but most of all, we thank you for the pure and unadulterated word that we have this day and this hour. We ask you to be with the people. We bless them, Lord, as you've done always and will continue to do. We look forward for every day for that promise, for every promise in the book is mine, O Lord, and I claim it. And I underline it every time I read and run across it, O Lord, and I just thank you. Bless the people in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Remain standing just a minute. Let's go to G. Amazing grace.
wash the blood. Yeah. Two twelve. <coughs> Oh, 
see him and then look into his word. It's good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. If you like turning your scriptures, turn back where we've been reading from Psalms 118, and then we'll go to Colossians 1. Psalms 118, Colossians 1. Really had a wonderful time over the weekend. I hope you did. Had a good time with the Brother Hughes and fellowshipping and everything with him and then great time in his ministry and preaching unto us. And I really appreciate it. Amen. Uh, I want to thank again everybody for all of the food, the work that was done, the things that was, you know, around and done. And, and all. we certainly do appreciate it. You know, it's a... Uh, it turned out real good. Everybody got fed good. In one of the largest meetings I guess we've had here in the basis, especially the fellowship meetings, right. about they said 139, I think it was here. So we were packed up, Amen. and uh, we we just appreciate that. Psalms 118 <clears throat> and Colossians 1. Remember my wife? She's still having problems. She's going back to the doctor or going to the doctor tomorrow maybe to get the uh, the staples out and it'll give her more mobility and everything and pray that the Lord would touch her. Amen. I hope they're able to connect home. We've had the most uh, problems and fun too, I guess, trying to hook on an internet system when they did finally get DSL over to our house. And, and then we thought, well, it just hooked right on. Well, now it's up and down, up and down. So anything it's the prophet said that, Satan fights is generally right. So, you know, we hope that it'll work out to where we'll have it set up correctly, okay? Father, we thank you for your love and your grace unto us. We thank you for the day. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together this afternoon. We ask that you would just bless us now with your presence and that, Lord, you may come among us and that, Father, that you would open your word unto us because that's the way we believe that you are now revealing yourself is through the revealed word. We thank you and we ask you to just have your way. Touch our wife, our Lord, and deliver and remember the sick among us and let your light shine in each one of our hearts. Forgive our sins and Lord, just cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to walk in you. We commit it all to you now. As we read your word, you come and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Into them and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord unto which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee. Send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Let's go over to Colossians 1. We'll begin reading about verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the of the light of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, who is this one we're talking about? who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were made by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. We'll stop there because... In the next message or so, we'll go on down into the rest. You may be seated. The Lord have his blessing, add his blessing to the reading of the word. And we've been talking about for quite a while. We have a lot of quotes up here. 
and I'm sure we will not be able to get to all of them, but we'll try because I have a point that I want you to see and, uh, you know, I want you to listen to it as I try to express it and then, you know, that's as much as I can do. It's up to God to reveal it unto you. Now, I had a little experience. I told Wade about it yesterday. I had a little experience this week and I've been burdened about something about the the uh, the way I preach and the things and trying to do and you know for about close to 40 years and it has been a burden because a lot of people have rejected what I've tried to preach and uh, I always burdened me because I thought I could maybe in some way I could have presented it a different way uh, made it you know uh, more understandable and all but I, I've tried and uh, I'll keep on trying to be able to break down what I believe the Lord has given us but you know I was praying about it and everything and sitting downstairs doing some corn and and uh, I, all at once something just spoke to me and said they didn't understand what she was just saying and uh, that's all it was said but you know that lifted that burden he said well that was not very much to be said might not for you but uh, it has a lot of meaning to me but because I've tried to make myself clear and tried to preach. I've never tried to preach nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And uh, I've never tried to preach nothing but the revealed Word of the hour and the things that, that you know, the prophet has brought unto us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just... Uh, I've tried, and I believe the Lord was just saying, okay... They just don't understand what you're talking about. Because you see, you'll see that more tonight in the message if you'll listen to the point I'm going to try to make. You'll see more about what I'm saying. Because in Colossians there now, it's the only time the word visible is used in the scriptures that I can find. Now, invisible is used a lot of times in, in things and and it has no other, um, anyone listening, uh, it has no other carryover to go into uh, another um, words like other things says. But uh, that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about how that God can become visible among us and will be able to raise the dead. I gave you the quote and. We'll go in a rapture. Uh, glad to have our brother back there with us. Uh, we always say to you when you come one time around here, you're a visitor. You come two times, you're part of us. So we don't join anything. We're just part of the body of Christ. So don't expect to get welcomed again. Just always one time for you. That's a, because if you don't make yourself welcomed, it's your problem. All right. But now, as I said, the word visible... I gave you some quotes, and I've quoted it many times over and over. It's number three on your notes there. Where the prophet of God and what was the Holy Ghost given for, 59. He said that God would become visible among us and raise the dead, and we'd go into rapture. Huh? Well, see, that's easy for um, someone who believes in a literal physical coming of the body, you know, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we know that's not true. Because we meet Him in the air. Right. So now if we meet Him in the air, He's not coming back here in a physical body because as I've always tried to say to you, that if He came now in a physical body, then uh, it would be breaking the Scriptures because we're His body. Right. Right. 
Right. We are the body of Christ. It goes on down there in Colossians, but we want to hold off a little bit on that because we'll get on to some other things with it. But see, to become visible, most everybody says, you know, you talk to people about the Bible and they'll say, well, the Bible says. Well, all right, that's good. You know, I'm glad we can read. But now, what it says on the literal word has to be understood by the text or context, every which one you would place it, as to what it's being used in. Like the prophet of God talking about our English language is so messed up, and I agree that, like he said, you can take the word board and you can use it for for uh, a plank on a sh- on on a you know a board that you step on, or or you can use it come on board, or or you can say pay your board. Uh, or you can say I'm bored with you. Well now, uh, to me then, the only way you'll understand what that's being said is to know what text it's in. Right. right. Yep. Now if I'm wrong on that text or context, I don't have the English and I'm not educated enough to know, so you put it in there. But see, the before and the after, as I've always said to you, explains it. Right. All right? See, so you read the before and the after. And I say to you, I say, now, Brother Gary, come on board, stand on this board, and pay your board, because I'm bored with you. (laughs) And he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Right? Right? The words that I'm using is telling you what, you know, what I mean. And that's the way it is with God's Word. So then that way you don't read it like a newspaper. You read it waiting upon God to speak to you and show you what He wants us to hear. So now, Strong's Concordance, which is a definition in words in your Bible, it says that visible is something that is open to the view. Hmm? Open to the view. Webster, your dictionary, says that it is, is that can be seen, perceptible, in other words, which you can look at it, you know, perceive it, to the eye. It means apparent, you know, A-P-P-A-R-E-N-T. Or it means manifest or something that's obvious. All right? Now, apparent means to be exposed to sight, visible, capable of easily being perceived, or understood. All right, now we read here that this one that we're talking about is the image of the invisible God. Right. All right? Now, we used to be Trinitarians, or we used to be God in three person Trinitarians. Well, we didn't have much trouble with that because we thought we understood what it was saying. Because we thought it was one person and another person looked like them. You know. So we'd say, Father and Son. You know. And we, we thought we really had it figured out. But then when we come to the conclusion to realize that that's not what it's saying. Amen. Yeah. When that word there in the verse 15 is used, the image, that means an exact likeness. Image. Now, as I said, we use our words as image, and we try to take something to make an image of it. But irregardless of how much you could do, you could take this bottle, and you could try in every way you could do to make an exact image of that bottle. And you know it can never be done. Even the best they can do with the uh, um, machines today to be able to put something in it and draw it out, to bring it out, it is still limited to the point that there can be a slight flaw. You agree? You say, I'm going to make an image of this. 
I'm going to take those drums home and I'm going to build me a set of drums exactly like that drum. Well, I can't do it. I can get as close as I can, but I can never make it exactly. Well, all right. Then if that's true in the natural, like I remember Brother Hantus was a machinist, and he said, you know, you take a gear and the gear gets all worn out. Well, Brother Boyd and them would understand, and you go down to a place, and, and you tell a man, and you hand it to him, and said, I want a gear just like this one. Um, uh, <laughs> now, that's not what the man wants. That's right. 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 He doesn't want one like that. Right. That one's worn out. Right. <laughs> he wants one like that one was. That's right. right. But see, in God now, that's why we believe in one true and living God. Amen. See? Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's right. Amen. Amen. So he's not one in another likeness. Come on. Amen. See? He's God revealing Himself in another form. Right. He revealed Himself to the children of Israel as Father. You know, pillar of fire and all that. Then He was in flesh. And the Scripture said, In Him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And now the Holy Ghost is living in His church. It's the same God. Huh? So then He's not another person. And living in you is not another person. Huh? Now, so then when you get on down to the, the fact of him talking about that all that is visible and invisible, whether in heaven or whether in earth, was made by him. Amen. By him who? The Word. Amen. Right. The Word made all things, right? Amen. That's why John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For, verse 14 said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's right. All right. Amen. Now, that's why we believe in one true and living God. That God changed His form to appear down through time. He would change His form to be whatever the age needed. Right. Now, I'm trying to make a little background, so hang on to that. So then, if you're talking about something that is open to view, now remember, Maybe you wouldn't understand this statement, but I had rather have God to speak to me about what He has in His Word written down for me to understand. Now listen. Than for me to physically see Him. Now, you see, you may not believe it that way, but that's the way I do. So you say, no, if I physically see Him. No, no. Satan can impersonate all of those things and he could come into an, a form that I would be all confused about. But yet if he reveals his word, then he and his word are one. Right. Right. So now we're going to talk about how that God can be visible, but not here in a corporal body. Not here as a mortal being. You know? like we are but he can be here that is more real than we are because that's what we don't look at you mean this wood that this pulpit is made out of is more real than God's word that made it no huh? right. Amen. because God's word can make another tree this tree this wood can't make another piece of wood no more it's done gone too far it can't be done huh? but now think about it See, something that can become apparent. In other words, something that can become to where that you can see it. Right. You said, but you can't see God, Brother Dale. Well, why not? Amen. It's according to how you're looking. Well, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. But it also says Jesus Christ declared it. Right. Now, are you going to fight one scripture with the other? If he declared it, that means he brought him out into the open. Right. 
So we're not going to argue words or anything. I'm just getting a point to you. That being visible among us means a great thing. All right. Now, so we're going to have to be real slow about that, and that's what I intend to be. To be visible then is not physical, mortal, this way. But it means that it can be revealed. Right. It can be revealed. God can be revealed. Right. Right. If we don't believe that, what do we believe? The new birth is a revelation to you. A revelation of that God has accepted you and given you His own life. So then... I want something that I can see by revelation, apparent to the eye, see. In other words, I can see it. But now, just holding that point to a revelation, I know that's basically the words you jump with when you talk about something apparent to the eye, something that can be understood and all of that, and you say, well, well, that's a revelation. Well, now... This is where we're going to get into something that we need a revelation. We need something to be revealed to us about this. Because God is visible here in the last days in a greater way than He was down through the ages. Would you agree? Well now, then if that's true and you're only using the word... uh, a vi- you know, as visible as being a revelation, then you're going to lose where Martin Luther and them had the new birth. Right. And you're going to do like a lot of people of the message has done, and I'll read it to you in just a minute, that they've used the, the thought of Alpha and Omega, that he was back there in the book of Acts, and then he'll be here in the last days, but he's not in between. Well, now, what kind of a God do you have? So if you use the word revelation and that only, you're not going to get the understanding of what we're going to try to get into for a minute and just read a little bit and then just look at it and see what we're talking about. So listen to what your prophet had to say. Look at number four on your notes. Number three is where he said that he would become visible among us Raise the dead and we'll go into rapture. Now watch what he says. Proof of his resurrection, 55, 410, the morning service. Listen. He's talking about Mary Magdalene and Martha coming to the grave and the things. He says, first, early that morning, Christ showed himself visible among the early risers. And then he never showed it anymore through the span of the day until the evening time. So now he's perfectly in Scripture, right? Then he made himself known again, for he was Alpha and Omega. It'll be light in the evening time, the path of glory you surely find. All right. So now, what's he saying? When Jesus rose from the dead, Mary and Martha saw him. It was early in the morning. All right. And then read your scripture. He's not seen anymore throughout the day. But he's seen at evening time when he comes and appears among them. All right. So now, there's your, your thought of what the prophet is saying. He never showed it anymore through the span of time until the evening time. Why? Because he's Alpha and he's Omega. Now, just go on down a little bit to about number 6A on your notes, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, 1958, uh, 928, the morning service. Look what he's saying. He's talking about the right hand and the left hand, the candlestick, the darkness and how that it goes. And he says, not in the... Alpha and Omega, not the in-between. The Alpha and Omega had his hand stretched out. Now, 
In that quote, it looks like he's saying that he's not in between. So that one was used by a lot of people in the message to say he was God in the early church, but then he was not God down through time. He was just, you know, some kind of anointing, some little something that was there. But in the evening time, he would come back to be the same. Now we're going to get that to that in a minute, but go on down. That was 1958, 928, now 1960, 1206, somewhere in church age. He said he's both the Alpha and Omega, and of course all was in between it too. All the other letters. But he specifically said Alpha and Omega. Had a rainbow over his head and all that's over in the book of Revelation. Now, so we know the prophet is not saying one thing in one place, another thing in another place. He is trying to describe what he has said. That he is Alpha and Omega. All right. The outstretched arms of the cross reaching out. See, the church ages, the symbolics, the, the book of Revelations would come out to be Alpha and Omega. Saying what? Just like he was saying about the Alpha and Omega when he was talking about the resurrection. That there he was, the early morning they saw him. Then he's not seen for a while in a physical form like. But then in the evening time he's seen. So that's we see is what God is trying to do. He's going to make himself visible. He was there visible. Look on over to 6C, I guess you'd call it. Look on to the next page. It says Masterpiece, 1964-705. The Alpha and Omega is the same. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. He never say anything in between. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. That's it. Now what's he explaining? Looks like he's contrary to one quote to the other quote. No, it's not. The before and the after. Read it, because the before and the after of Brother Branham is the fact that he didn't change. If he did, he told you about it. I've heard this argued and argued about people, and I said, well, what is? what was God in those ages in between? Oh, he's just down to there. Well, see, they don't know nothing about it, because according to my Bible, he's Hebrews 13, 8, which says that he's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, Today and forever. Amen. Whatever he was, he is. Amen. Whatever he is, he was and will forever be. Right. Or you've missed the scripture. Right. But see, now I'm just trying to make a point to you. Look what he goes on to say. He said the first ministry and the last ministry is the same. The first message and the second last message is the same thing. Now, the first ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ was when he was walking up on this earth. Right. And he brought a ministry for three and a half years. All right. Now, then you come up to the book of Acts and you'll find that they had the ministry of Jesus Christ in the book of Acts. But they had some things that was not present there that would be in the end time. So that's what I want you to look at for a minute. In the book of Acts, I gave you quotes down through there and they were in it that that they had the same ministry of Jesus Christ in the apostles. That's on down uh, number eight on your notes. Exactly like they always did. See, the, the same ministry in the apostles. And so you that's why we have a, a thought and always try to talk about that what? That we must be restored back to the faith of the fathers. That's what Malachi 4 says. Turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of the fathers. Right? Faith is the revelation, right? So we are to be returned in the last days back to the revelation of the apostles. Right. Now there, you got to say the same ministry. Everybody's just looking for the same ministry that Jesus had while he was walking here to come back. And it cannot take place because you do not have any foundation 
for it to rest upon. Oh, it's just the same ministry. No, you can't do it because there were some things the Lord Jesus talked about that none of the disciples knew anything about. Show me one scripture where any of the disciples outside of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John now that said one word about the Son of Man. They didn't understand it. But yet the Lord Jesus constantly said, Son of Man, Son of Man. Who did man say, I'm the Son of Man? Am. They didn't understand it. Why? Because it was withholding from them. But then in the end time, see, to come back, that we're coming back to the Son of Man Amen. to understand. But if you don't see that the same ministry has got to be among us that was in the book of Acts. Amen. You don't have any foundation. You don't have anything. You're standing out in midair in the gospel. You see, the same Lord Jesus Christ that was in the book of Acts it's got to be back here now. That's what I'm talking about, the coming of the Lord. That's why I've been trying to preach it to you, ten sermons now, that the coming of the Lord is a revealing of His Word. And that He started His second coming, were on the day of Pentecost. He was here in His first coming. He started His second coming on the day of Pentecost. Amen. But we're still in we're still in the part of his coming. Because we haven't went up to meet him in the air. Right? Because that will climax the second coming to you and I. Right? So there in the the thing is what? We've got to have the faith of the fathers. Right. Right. If we don't have the faith of the fathers, then you, you can't go on. Like I've always tried to describe it to you. If something is required to be, but yet there's a vast gap in between, how are you going to get there? Right. See? I know we talk on strange terms and strange languages, but to newcomers and things, and but just remember we've been doing this forty years. Yeah. But see, I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. But the same one who walked the shores of Galilee, right. when he gave his life, right. that Holy Ghost that was in him right. came back on the day of Pentecost, Amen. and there was God manifest then in a group of people. Right. Amen. Whereas at the start, it was God manifested in hum one human body. You know? right. That started his second coming. Right. So what are you looking for in His second coming? Oh, this cloud's going to split. It's going to go up the eastern sky and all this to do, to do, to do with the horns and all that. No. I thought it was going to be a secret coming. Come on. I didn't think CNN was going to know about this <laughs> or CBS or any of them. I thought it was going to be a secret coming. Right. I thought the Scripture said that he would come as a thief in the night. Right. Now, a thief in the night don't broadcast on the CNN who he's going to rob. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. But you see, that's what we're talking about. The revealing of Jesus Christ back there. And it started on the day of Pentecost were that He placed within them exactly what they needed for the day. And He gave them His ministry that He had had. But there were some things that He didn't tell them. He didn't tell them when He was coming. He didn't tell them those things. He withheld that. See, it would be a mystery then, as I was trying to bring out the other day. But there's a difference in the what? in the appearing of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. Because He can appear anywhere. But His coming is in the hearts of the saints. He said, well, I thought it was 
this, and I thought it was, yeah, that's what a lot of people think. They think it was Brother Branham that stood here. And I don't believe it. I don't believe he was God, no. That would mess up the Scripture. Let me quote him to you. If you think Brother Branham was God, let me quote him. And I don't have to go through all of the big quotes to, to lay it in your lap. He said, if you say that you have oil on your forehead and blood in your hands and things, he said, you're denying the fact of his coming because you're saying he's here in a corporal body. And he said, that's wrong. So if Brother Branham was him, that would have messed the whole thing up. That's why we don't believe it. Sure, we believe he was the prophet of God that God used. But he was not God. People will say, well, Brother Adam was my God. Be careful what you're saying. Because he was not our God. He was God's prophet to bring us the message. Now, he was not the coming of the Lord. He was the one that God would use to speak and tell us what his coming is. A lot of difference in it. The before and after cleared up a lot of things, doesn't it? But do you understand what I'm trying to say? That he would become visible. Right. And visible means that someone would be able to see it. Right. That's right. Now that's what I'm trying to describe. Right. So look at it. But if we don't have the faith of the fathers, then we don't know anything about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Right. Come on, that's as simple as I can make it. Right. We don't understand the faith of the fathers and don't have the faith of the fathers. We're not even in line for the second coming because we don't know what it is. Right. Because we're like the organized religion. You know what you mentioned to organized religion about the mysteries in the Bible? And because I come through there, and you know what they'll say? Well, that's what Paul talked about the mystery. The engrafting of the Gentiles. Well, that's true. <coughs> that was a mystery that was sealed up in the Old Testament yep. that no one knew that the Gentiles was going to come in to the plan of redemption. Yep. But yet God spoke of it by bringing in Rahab the harlot, yep. bringing in the different ones that were Ruth and Boaz. He began to speak of those things. But then one day, see, he spoke of it in like Isaiah's and them saying that be known of a people that are not my people. Yep. But then one day, the door was open to the Gentiles to be able to come in. Right. So it was a mystery, yes. But it's not the mystery of all mysteries. Right. Right. See, in the end time, we're to understand that there's got to be, there's got to be a group of people that come to the stature of a perfect man that we talk about, add to your faith, virtue, and all his temperate faith, and come up to where the faith of the fathers exists. Yep, right. And then we can speak of the coming of the Lord. Right. But you see, we know so much. You know, we think. Yeah. And it's just like it was years ago, and I know this offended people, and it'll offend you again. But, but I was trying to preach on a doctrine years ago that where they were trying to preach about the Son of Man. I asked a simple question here in the church. And I said, when I say Son of God, what do you think of? And everybody here said 2,000 years ago on the shores of Galilee. I said, there's no need of talking about Son of Man until we understand Son of God. So I immediately dropped off of that and began to preach the Son of God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because if we didn't know that that is not the first time the Son of God came into being, the Son of God was the Word that created all things. Right. And that would be the Logos that went out of God in the beginning. The very breath of God would be called the Son of God. Huh? But you see... Because people think they know everything. But then when we turn down 
what someone is trying to bring on a subject, you know. And that was what I was worried about and burdened, see, is to see people turn down what you're talking about. Right. See, I can't help it because I do the best I can. It's up to God to reveal. Right. But now listen. The same ministry that Jesus gave those apostles, which was Christ in you, Paul said, the hope of glory. They went forth, and even in the, the Scripture there, they were called Christians at Antioch. Why? Right. Because they were Christ-like. Right. Not that they looked like Him. No, they were living like Him. Amen. And God was using them to manifest Himself among the people. And they were called Christians. In other words, they were saying, Jesus Christ is here again. In the faith of the fathers, then, you find the revelation of the fathers. They had the understanding of one true and living God. Paul having the greater understanding of all of them. Even though Peter says, he says, things hard to be understood. Do they that are learned wrestle at what he's doing? You know, in other words, you, you, you can't understand what he's talking about. Well, he was trying to speak to him what God was revealing to him. And he said, not a one of you guys added anything to what I said. And they couldn't argue with him. But still, Paul didn't have the understanding to be able to bring it back in the end time. So God would wait and bring it. So what was he? He was in the first church. He was in the book of Acts. Are you going to say that was not God? No, he was there. Then when the Holy Ghost came down on Zeus Street and started there in 1906 and started the, the, the Holy Ghost Himself coming back into the church, your prophet says the ministry of Jesus Christ, like the apostles had, is here now. Of course, everybody said, oh yeah, it was in Brother Branham. But he said it was in the church. Right. Amen. But you see... If that book of Acts is not in you and I, there's no even need of even talking about the coming of the Lord because we right. can't comprehend it. Right. The coming of the Lord is the revealing of His Word. Right. And there was things He did not reveal to those apostles. That's right. So the same ministry has got to be here then in the end time that was in the book of Acts before you can talk about the same ministry that Brother Branham had. Are you listening? See, people will say, well, Brother Adam had that ministry, and we got it. Where's it at? You can't even keep together what he's saying. Right? They're going off all kind of doctrines because they can't even keep together what he was saying. Well, Brother Dale, what are you talking about? I'm talking about, I believe that like it was at there at the resurrection. In the early church, God was there with them. But as it came down through the dark ages, God was still there, just like He was when He was with the children of Israel and all of their sins and things that were taking place. God was still there with them. He was right there, hovered over them and with them. They were the ones that didn't see Him. He was still guiding and leading them. But they'd lost the understanding of His leadership. Amen. So did they down to the ages and come out with denominationalism. Come out then forming churches. And don't get me wrong. God was using them. Sure. Amen. Martin Luther, when he preached the just you'll live by faith, turned the world upside down. Amen. Thank God for the truth that He brought. Amen. Thank God for what John Wesley. Amen. All of those men brought. Thank God for it. We wouldn't know what we're doing today. The Baptist restored baptism by immersing. You know, going down, up. Each one had its own thing to restore. 
But see, in the end time, then we got to come back to the faith of the fathers. Amen. we got to come back to the revelation they had. But now listen, intellectual concept is not revelation. Right. Amen. To say we are here doesn't mean we're here. Right. It's what it does. I'm here. I ain't talking about that. Right. To say we have the faith of the fathers without having the revelation that the fathers had would immediately show we were wrong. Correct? Yeah, right. We'd be believing in a trinity and they believe in one God. You'd automatically know that that's not there. But it's also the same God that was there has to be among us. Right. Amen. Doing the things right. that He done there. Right. But you see, that's where the people are at today, though. They can't see God among the people today. Right. That's right. But yet you can't deny that you turn on a TV and see the denominations and having healings and signs and wonders. Right. Sure. You tell me they're not. I'll tell you, you're... You sure have messed up a lot. Because they have signs and wonders among us. Well, if they do, that means they're among us also. If we believe it. Amen. But if we don't believe it, it can't be made manifest. That's right. Ain't no need of you getting up, coming up here and asking me to pray for you if you don't believe God's in me. Come on. Right? I mean, you might as well stay in your seat. Right. But if you believe God will meet you here, you come up here, God will meet you here. Right. Yeah. What do you believe? That's right. Yeah. What would have to happen for you to believe it? Come on. Well, it's so and so, so and so. Well, that's, that's what they told Jesus. If you be God, come down right. off the cross. Right. Yeah. If you be God, we've got a whole graveyard full of dead people up here. Come here and raise them up, and we'll believe you. Now, he knew they wouldn't believe him. So he wouldn't even go in and raise a graveyard. Right. It's not the fact that he couldn't do it. Right. Right? He could have done it. But he knew they wouldn't believe him. Right. See, God don't play. But see, the same ministry that Jesus had then, he put it in the early church. And they had the signs and the wonders. And that lasted for about four church ages through there. Great things taking place. But then it had to die and go into the ground because that's what Jesus said. Unless a corner of wheat die and go into the ground, in the Bible alone, it said if it dies and goes to the ground, it'll come forth and multiply it forth. That was speaking of Him because He died and when He did, He come back on the day of Pentecost in 120 at one time and then 3,000 at another. But He was also speaking of the church ages that the bride would have to go in the ground and come out. Right. Right. See, we're in a restoration. Yeah. We're not in a reformation. Right. We're in restoration. Yeah. And see, restoration requires revelation. Yeah. Reformation, it can be done on a lot of times. You can reform yourself. Right. Go down to Alcoholics Anonymous, and right. they'll talk you out of drinking. Right. But they won't deliver you. They won't deliver you. They'll talk you out of it. Well, that's reformation. Not saying Luther and Wesley didn't have anything. Because they did. That's my point. They had God. They had God among them. But He was going into the ground to where He could come out. But if we don't come back to the faith of the fathers, then... Where are we going? But if we don't believe that the faith of the fathers is here, God can never make it manifest. Right. That's right. Amen. He's waiting on you and I. Amen. That quote I gave you there to start with, where he said he'd become visible among us. Read it. Read it where he said he's waiting on you and I. The church is in the grave is waiting on you and I. To what? To first start saying it. Right. We gotta say it before he can make it manifest. Right. right. Now come on. Am I in the scripture? What does the scripture say? Man believe in his heart. No, it doesn't just say that, it says he's right. saved. 
You've got to confess with his mouth. There's a two-part there of it. You believe in your heart. But if you won't confess with your mouth, like Brother Rice told that time, you know, said, that lady said, told the other one, said, I got the Holy Ghost the other night. I spoke in tongues, but don't you tell nobody. <laughs> oh, now, she didn't get it. Because the Bible says, believing in your heart's fine, but you got to confess with your mouth. Well, you got to confess it before you can possess it. But now we're fighting off, we're going the opposite direction. We're saying if it come here, then we'll confess it. No, we got to confess it. We've got to confess it before it can be made manifest. Well, why can't we start saying that the same God that was in the book of Acts is here today? All right. And of course, then when I try to explain it, everybody thinks that I'm saying that, that you know, that uh, trying to explain it away. No, I'm just truthful. And that's what people are getting away from the truth. That's what I was telling you the Lord told me. He said, you told them the truth? Right. The truth is, you bring them apostles down here and they got problems fooling with what we got. Right. <laughs> Amen. They had a Pharisee and a Sadducee. Right. right. No denominational doctrines. Nope. We got 969 plus 10,000 in this message afterward. Oh That's right. Right? Right. You say, well, that's trying to justify it. No, that's not justifying it. That's just telling you standing. Right. We're standing here in a situation that we've got to overcome that thought of our mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. We've got to overcome the point of thinking we don't have it. Right. What did Brother Ram tell that man when he prayed for him that was blind? Right? He told him, he said, go say and you're healed. Right. Go tell everybody you can see. Right. Well, now I don't want I don't want to lie. Because I'm still blind. No, you're a liar when you say God ain't already healed you. Right. Right. Don't worry about lying, you're already a liar. Right. Right. When you say God ain't healed you, you're lying. Because right. my Bible says by stripes, I am already healed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to be. But he's waiting on me to say it. Right. Right. Yeah. So the man began to go out. He came back, you know, and he said, Don't you told me I was healed? He said, Are you doubting? Mm. He said, Go say it. Yeah. Right. Right. Remember, he said, and paper got on the side of the street. Yeah. I think he went in to get a haircut or something, didn't he? A shave or something. The man was kind of a baking light of him. And, don't you said you could see? He said, I can see. And about that time his eyes opened, he went running out in the street. Right. Mm -hmm. Hollering to everybody. Well, now, what if he hadn't have said that? Right. Amen. What if he hadn't have said he could see? Right. He'd have died blind. Yep. Right. God's waiting on you and I. You want to make him visible? Make his word visible. That's it, right there. Amen. Amen. Make his word to be word that there's no possibility of it failing. Amen. Amen. That's right. There's not no failures in this Bible. Right. Amen. I told you, show me one one time, remember? Some was coming up with this one and some was coming up with that one. I said, show me one believer in the Bible that ever failed. That's right. Amen. I said, the greatest one I know of is Saul. Where he turned against God. Right. He denied him and went down to the witch of Endor and all of the things. But I said, after all was said and done, when Samuel come up, he said, Saul, you will be with me the day right. in paradise. Right. Right. He was not a failure. Amen. They'd never been a believer in the Bible, it was a failure. Amen. But every believer has to confess it. Right. right. You gotta confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. Right. right. Well, 
I kind of believe, Sister Gail, that we're in the end, don't you? <laughs> now let me announce it! <laughs> we are. Amen. Amen. The government sure ain't got nothing to do with it. <laughs> right. Amen. They sure ain't having us. Right. <laughs> like the brother said there the other day, they got them camps waiting on us, them old nuts and fanatics up there in Alaska and all. They got places for us. Amen. But you see, they can't get us till God gets through with us. Right. Amen. They can't bother us, Brother Mark, until God gets through with us. Amen. Then when He gets through with us, I ain't worried about it. Amen. I remember one time reading a story about that these people were going to take some cattle or something and they were going to Alaska. Horses and stuff like that, you know, and they they thought, well, man, they'll freeze to death when we get there. So they spent a lot of time making them all great big coats and quilts and things to hang over the animals. You know. But you know, by the time they got through marching them there, they come to find out they didn't need no hair to put on. Right. They'd already grown it real thick. Right. And they could live. Right. See? We just get in the way. Right. Amen. And get our smart actually bored. I don't know about bored. Which bored are you talking about? Well, I done told you, come on board. Pay you more because I'm bored with you. That's enough. The before and the after explains it. The before back there, the after we get out of here. And what's in between? God Almighty making himself manifest right. among the bride Amen. of Jesus Christ in the end time. Amen. Try to get her to believe it. Right. Well, I just don't see it. Well, that means you don't have it either. Right. right. Come on. If you don't see it, you don't have it. Right? Right. 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 So somebody comes along to you and starts saying, well, I just don't see it. Well, I say, all right, you're the number one. You don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Amen. He said, well, a lot of people said we have it. Don't have it. No, but there's a lot of people said we had it. Had it. Too. Right. Right. Martin Luther thought he had it. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? right. He's a great Catholic priest. He thought he had it. But you know, one day the Lord revealed to him the just shall live by faith. Right. You know, he walked out of there and he didn't say what I used to have or anything. He said, I got it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. I like what the prophet said about what the scripture said. This is that. <laughs> right. This is that. That it was broken up. All right. If this ain't that, let me say this till that gets here. That's right. Because if we don't say this, that can't come. That's right. If we don't say we're healed, we can't be healed. Right. If we don't say we're saved, we can't be saved. Right. If we don't say we have the faith of the fathers, we can never have it. Right. Amen. And if we don't say that we're already changed, it can never take place. Mm. You mean you're going to say you're changed and standing here? Well, you're going to, you tell me how it's going to come then. Come on. Right. Pulpit's open. Come on. Right. Amen. It sure ain't going to come with our stupidity. That's right. It's going to come by somebody saying it. Right. Amen. Somebody's going to speak it and it'll take place. That's right. Well, the prophet of God has already spoken. Amen. <laughs> but he's waiting on somebody to say what he said. Amen. Like I've tried my best to preach to you how Joshua was. Joshua told them people, go down there and walk around them walls right. one time a day for seven days. Right. He said, then on the seventh day you walk seven times right. and keep your mouth shut until you finish that seventh time. And said, then turn around and face that wall. You know where Joshua was at? Up on the hillside. Watch it. You said, that ain't in the Bible. Will you show me where he was against the wall? It ain't in there either. Come on, I'm too old to play with words with you. Joshua told them what to do. When they done what he said do, the walls came down. Right. When Joshua told them what to do, the walls never fell. 
But when he told them what to do, and they done what he said, and shouted what he said, those great walls, the ground just opened up. And they just went right down in the ground. Didn't crumble over. Just went right down in the ground. After it all was said and done, everybody was glad Joshua said that, wasn't it? But you know what? Joshua was glad that he had a group of people that could go down there and say what he said. Right. That's all I've ever said about this message. As this prophet of God is laying in the ground up here in Jeffersonville, Indiana, waiting on you and I right. to reach that place in faith right. that can draw him out of that ground. Right. Now see, everybody else got most of them got their hopes on. He's going to come back and he's going to do something for us. Right. <laughs> well, show me that in the scripture. Right. Well, that's the great mystery. I know it. That's a mystery that I can't put to before and after the work. <laughs> Bless it. Come on. You know what I mean by that? Amen. I can't say, come on board, pay your board, go on board. I can't say that. Because I can't find that in the Bible that he's supposed to come back and speak us a glorified body. Come on. I thought your prophet and my prophet said your glorified body was built around your born again experience. Right. That's what he told us. Right. If you want to call it speaking the body, he'd already done it. Right. But you know what? Before the world, Jesus Christ has already spoken. Right. The invisible has become visible. Amen. If you can see it. Right. If you can see it. But see, we only deal with the same ministry of Jesus Christ as talking about Brother Branham with the gifts of discernments and the resurrection sign, etc. Well, your prophet covered the day of Pentecost as the ministry of Jesus Christ. And he covered that the ministry of Jesus Christ would have to come again in the end time right. as the faith of the Father. Amen. Then we can walk off of this earth. Right. He's going to become visible among us, folks. Right. By the revealed word. Amen. By the revealed word. You tell right. me how else it's going to take place. Okay. Come on, show me some other way. Right. Give me a rabbit and hat trick or something to get us out of here. But no, it won't work. That's why we've been here 40 something years. That's right. After the prophets come. Amen. Why? Because the people won't say what the prophet said. Well, yeah, that's right, brother. That, and all right here in Lula, Georgia. I don't preach somewhere else. I'm preaching to me and you. Anybody else listens to it? That's up to you. I preach to my people. You want the benefits of it? You know where the church is at. I ain't no argument with nobody about it. I never invited none of you to come. But you see, I'm trying to preach God's Word. Because only in the revealed Word can we come out to an end time. But only through the end, the revealed Word can we see the coming of the Lord is the revealing of His Word. Right. I still ain't got to the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout yet, have I? No. Well, we've got another message or two before then, I guess. But I'm just trying to get you to look at something tonight. You're right. You say, I don't see him. It's because you can't open your eyes. Right. You can't show a blind man. That's right. Now, here's our problem, folks. I don't call all of us blind, okay? I, I always get this messed up, and I can't remember which one's nearsighted and which one's farsighted. Because they tell me far-sighted is you can see far-sighted and near-sighted you can see near-sighted or something. I can't get it straight. All right, I'll just put it in plain old Georgia language. There's a lot of people got that need some glasses to be able to see at a long range for a little while. Right. right. To be able to look out and see right. further than the end of your nose. Right. Right. Yeah. And to see Jesus Christ is coming into our lives and our, our beings. Right. Then when it gets closer, we don't need no glasses. Right. That's right. You start out needing a set of telescopes. <laughs> right. Oh. Right. 
Brother Gary, you want to answer the rest of it for him? He said, I see this. I said, oh, you just opened the door. Right. He said, I see the end. I said, no, no, no. No, no. You just started the other end of the tunnel. Yeah. You just got your, 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 you got rid of your little glasses and got your set of binoculars to be able to see something out there with. Right. So you look through that until it gets where it gets blurred. And when it gets blurred, you know what it means? It's too close. You lay it down, then you look. Then you might have to put your glasses on and look. I used to get so tickled at an old man down there at work. Me and him worked together. I get so tickled at him, and he had, he wore glasses. And, and when he'd get in that little stuff, he'd take his glasses off and lay them down. Boy, he'd get down to work. I said, why in the world are you wearing it for? He said, I can't see out there. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's our problem, folks. We can't see no further than the end of our nose. Oh, my. Come on. I believe the revealing of His Word, don't you? Right. Amen. You say, well, Brother Dale, it can only be that we've got it intellectually. Now, I want that explained. That's, right. that's all I want. I want it explained that you can preach the mysteries of God. Listen, I know the Scriptures. I know what it says, that you can understand all mysteries. Right. Now, if you want to make me an unbeliever, go right ahead. Because I'm going to say something to you. Paul was not saying that you had a revelation of the mysteries. He was saying you had an intellectual concept. He was not saying you could understand by revelation the mysteries. He was saying you could have an intellectual conception. Right? Now, because if you say he was saying you had a revelation, you've got a problem. But you see, sure, I can stand up here and name off. I was thinking about it the other day and thought kind of how to bring a message to unbelievers, you know, I mean, people that didn't believe it. And then you could explain this and 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 explain that. And you just keep explaining the things of the Bible. Well, I can do that intellectually. Right. Sure can Right, right. I can do that intellectually. Amen. After the prophet told me. Right. Right. You right. see where I'm putting it? Right. After the prophet told me about these mysteries, we can now. Now, down through the ages, they couldn't explain the mysteries of the Bible. Now, come on. That's why I'm talking about the Alpha and Omega, because he's visible here in the end time. There was no part, no down through there. They couldn't explain the mysteries. You show me they did. They didn't do it. They couldn't explain the mysteries. The mysteries was to wait till the end time. But now I can tell you about the mysteries because Brother Brown told me how to tell it. You know, I can read. But now when it's revealed to you, right? you don't have to worry about it at all. Amen. And the best way to do that is one thing. And I know what you think. So go ahead. You find somebody that's got a revelation and let somebody try to explain the mysteries to it. If you got a mystery of serpent seed revealed to you, the letter of it will never do it. You'll go aground somewhere and I'll say, hold on right there. Like I told a man at work one time, I said, go ahead and show me where I'm wrong. But I said, when you say something that's not right in the Bible, I'm going to hold my hand up. I said, you got the opportunity to show me. He hadn't said two words and I had my hand up. He just hushed and said, come on. What was I doing? If you got a revelation of the mysteries, right. you don't have an you know intellectual conception only. Right. You know That's why I'm not afraid of any quote on any subject that anybody brings me the prophet of God said because like I gave you there where he says in one quote Alpha and Omega nothing in between then he said Alpha and Omega and everything in between now I say both of them's right well, how could that be because one, he was explaining Christ through every age. The other, he was explaining that God was highly prevalent, 
very visible among his first church age and down through for a while and then becomes visible again in the end time. Right. I gave you a bunch of quotes where your prophet said that he'd be visible. If you don't like him, then you read him. But see, you say, well, I don't know about it. Right, let me give you a couple more that I didn't put in. And then we'll quit. Message of Paradox, 1961, 12, And the words, he's talking about John 1, 1. Jesus was the Word. Yeah. The Bible says St. John, first chapter. And the words was visible. Now listen close. The word was invisible. Now listen. The word was invisible until it was made flesh. Right. right. Yep. And then the word become visible. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> and through his sacrificial death at Calvary and his resurrection positionally placed his church in that realm that the same invisible God could come into the individual and make the word visible. Right. Right. Oh my, I wish my church could get that. Amen. If you could see, friends, the invisible God made visible. Right. Amen. Well, see, you can't see me if it's not in your heart. Is that right? Right. No man can call Jesus Christ except it be by the Holy Ghost. Right? right? Not because you studied it, some quotes or whatever. Right. Listen to this one. Uh, go away, go away, Jesus. Uh, 63, 11, 30, the evening service. You might not be able to open your eyes and see him because he's in spirit form. Right. The invisible God. But he dwells among a visible people, making him visible by his promised word in that people. Do you understand that? Right. Dwells among his people, making himself visible right. through the revealed word. I'm looking. But I, I hadn't ended this. I'll try to get it back. You say, well, Brother Dale, aren't you looking for greater things to happen? Yes. I believe it, but it's only because you and I will believe what we're talking about now. Right. We don't believe where it is right now and get that straight and walk on, then don't worry about it when it gets over there. Because you're going to laugh and make fun of people and say, oh, that's just anointed ones. I've taught you over and over and proved to you by the Bible and the prophet's message. There'll come a time when gainsayers will be shut up. But it'll be too late for the gainsayer. It'll be too late. Which side are we going to be on? Well, so and so, that's why I, you know, I've always told you, don't make no lie about somebody over in this church getting healed. Right. Ah, oh, they just got emotional work up. No, don't right. make no light of it. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. If the person never healed, God done the healing. Amen. Amen. The devil can't heal and you can't heal. Right. right. Say, thank you, God. Right. I read in the paper where the, that they had a uh, somebody done this or prayed a prayer and something happened. I said, thank you, Lord. Right. Why? Because he's God. Amen. He can appear and do things. Right. But his coming is in your heart. Right. And the coming in your heart is the revealing of his word. Right. Amen. What else are you looking for? That's right. Well, it's just in that. I know what I've been called at. <laughs> Bless you. Yep. Ask a brother to his face one day. I said, What do you think about me? He said, You ain't nothing but a Baptist. You wouldn't, if you didn't know what he's talking about, what I'm talking about, you wouldn't know what's going on. He said, "You just bring it by the letter. You're just bringing the letter of the word." I said, "Well, if my letter is lined up better than your <laughs> spiritual condition, I'll just stick with what I got, right? Because at least we're somewhere God can meet. That's right." And make it manifest. Amen. Because if the, the 
If the seed's not in the ground, you're not going to get nothing. That's right. But you see what I'm talking about. Right. He's going to become visible among us through the revealed Word. Right. Sure, I'm looking for healing and signs and wonders. Yes. I cry and weep every day about my wife because that I didn't come to the place to lay hands on her for her to walk away from that or any of you that are sick. And I condemn my own self, not you. That's one thing this man's never done is look back and said, well, now if we get straightened up, we'd have it right around here, Lula. No. It wouldn't help me a bit for him to get straight. Help him. It won't help me. You blame everybody else for it. Just remember there's a God looking down. You see, everybody wants to put it off. All right. But let's start saying it. Why can't we say it? Because I'll show you when I get to it. All of those appearing and coming the prophet spoke of was up until 1962. He never used that after then. Because no longer was he appearing, nor neither was he coming. That's why he would always say, the seventh seal is his come in. Right. You can wait and check it. It's his coming. Coming is a process taking place over a period of time. Right. But the word come doesn't mean that. Right. That's why your prophet said he's here. Right. And you know what? God come down and proved it. Yep. Come on, Richard. God come down and proved it. Well, let's start saying he's here. Right. But you know what we generally wind up doing? We almost get killed in a car wreck. We say, God truly was with me. Well, why can't we say God's with us all the time? Like a man told me one time, and I said, Amen. He said, why do, I have to, why do we have to wait to get sick to pray for God to, to heal us? He said, why can't we say, God keep me from getting sick? What's wrong with it? Why can't you say, God keep me from getting sick? Ask him to take care of you. Right. When are we going to start saying it? Let me at least say what the prophet had to say. He said he's visible among us. Go ahead, right. Number two, the red book. Anybody have a need? The altar's open. See, if I didn't believe that God was the healer, I wouldn't give an altar call. If I didn't believe he was a healer, I wouldn't pray for nobody. You say, yeah, but I've seen you pray for many things. Yes, but you've seen me pray prayers that God healed too. Amen. All right, which one? So which one? Man singing as I go. Let's be positive about it.
singing from my heart. sickness can't come upon you unless he permits it. So he permits Satan to come after you. Now do you love him? Nothing can't happen to you without his okay. And now do you love him? Brother Marlowe with our sitting in a wheelchair one time and I prayed for him. I didn't think he'd live a week. Run down and weigh nothing. Probably wouldn't, what, 78 and 90 pounds or something? He was down to real low. Well, you know what? God had to allow the devil to do that. But do you love him? Amen. Things go wrong. Don't blame God. Thank God for what's happening. He said in his word, all things work together for good to them that are decalled according to his purpose. Well, you say, well, when you're down and out, you mean you thank God? Yep. Yeah. Sure. Why? Because you just think. You know, that one day there was a man named Job, and he was perfect. Everything was wonderful. He didn't get in all that trouble because of him being wrong. He got in all that trouble because he was right. right. He read your Bible because he was right. That's right. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? You know, God thought about it. Well, Sister Gabe, don't you ever think about it? Wouldn't it be nice up in heaven to say, Satan, have you considered Gail? 
Patterson down there. Just go ahead, the devil, and get on her knee and make them take it out, do this, that, and the other. Because I want to prove to you that she loves me. But now, don't you ever think about it? Wouldn't it be nice to think your name was called in heaven? Don't you think it would be great to think that God could literally have enough confidence in you to say, devil, get after him. Change it around, don't it? Makes it a different thought. Nobody enjoyed, and I don't tell me Job didn't enjoy being out there on that ice heap. I've had two or three boils on my body, and he had them all over him. We had antibiotics to take, stuff to try to help us. He didn't have nothing but a piece of old pot scratched, you know, or something scratchy with and a little old dog running around licking him. But you know, he said, God knows my way. And after I'm tried, all is well. All is finished. Hmm? Trials and afflictions is to bring us patience and love and joy and goodness and meekness. But yeah, we look at them a lot of times like we wonder what's going wrong. Well, you know, we ought to change it around and wonder what we've done right. And figure out maybe God has got confidence in us. Amen. And love Him. Father, we thank You. We love You and we just commit everything into Your hands. And we, Lord, we know that what we tried to say tonight is a broken record of trying to preach what we got in our heart. But yet we know that you was back there in a certain way in that early church. And you're here in a certain way now. You wasn't that way down through the ages because they couldn't understand you. They couldn't understand your revelation. They could only live for the time. But yet here we are in the end time with the opening of the word. If nothing else, we can see it with head knowledge. But then at least you can make it revealed to us. Father, we thank you. We love you. We just commit everything to you now. Dismiss the people. Take care of everybody on the way home. Give a safe journey. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed. Trouble sometimes are Filling these hearts with fear. Bring me a
Thank <laughs> you.